Vibrations podcast, part 39, Carrie Shakeshaft Nicholson. Recorded on the 1st of March 2022. Hi, I'm Gary Brightman, and this is my podcast called Vibrations. Established in 2018, Vibe is a book and music shop situated in Moi Wo on Lantau Island in Hong Kong. So, what's been happening at the shop recently? Given both the explosion in COVID rates in Hong Kong now, people are either sent to quarantine facilities or have decided on laying low themselves. This has caused a big drop in all businesses in Moi Wo and across Hong Kong. To date, there are 670,700 confirmed cases in Hong Kong, mostly coming in the last three weeks during the fifth wave. It seems the peak was a couple of weeks ago, with around 50,000 cases plus per day, and is now reduced to about 20,000 cases per day. Additionally, during the first two weeks of March, 50,000 people have departed from Hong Kong. Thankfully, retail shops have been allowed to remain open for the past two years. However, we're experiencing our biggest challenges to continuing business yet. On a more positive note, I've been asked to produce up to five audiobooks, something I've never done before, but I do have the skills to record and sound edit effectively. So, I took the decision to indulge in converting a room at home into a sound studio. Over the past two weeks, myself and Steve have designed a small room for sound absorption and converted it for use. And so, Studio 114 is born. The author of the books, Patrick Dransfield, will narrate them in a series of books called The Inner Circle. Watch this space for more info. Producing audiobooks is a resource-intensive project, but going forward, I will be happy to produce more as part of a widening vibe service. Saturday, the 21st of May, is our fourth year anniversary, and we're currently lining up some great musical talent to celebrate either virtually or in real life at Vibe. And so, to this week's interview with Carrie Shakeshaft Nicholson. Carrie as in Cary Grant, Shakeshaft Nicholson was born and raised in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, a steel city located between Toronto and Niagara Falls, approximate population of 580,000. At a young age, her parents divorced and remarried, resulting in a double household environment. Cary wasn't much into schooling. She attended a Catholic high school where her favourite subjects were drama and gym. She never finished college and started working for her family business, Tim Hortons, highly known in Canada. As a teenager, Carrie played a lot of basketball and in fact, briefly even played for Canada and spent time with her friends and pets. Roller skating became a huge pastime for several years. In her early 20s, she got hired at UPS and got involved with aviation where she met her one day to be husband, Brandon. Twelve years at UPS landed her a load planning and management position, allowing her to financially support herself. Not long after dating Brandon, he got offered a job with Cathay Pacific, which led them here to Hong Kong. Carrie then retired from aviation. After residing in Soho in the central area for a few months with a roommate, Carrie and Brandon moved to Lantau, in fact here in Moi Wo, and have happily been living in a village house with their four adopted dogs. Carrie now spends her days being a stay-at-home housewife, attending to household duties and spending time with her dogs. She's actively involved with Tales Lantau, a non-profit animal charity here on Lantau. Carrie loves Hong Kong and all it has to offer, but realised that the animals' welfare in Hong Kong is a mess and needs a major facelift. OK, so welcome to Vibe, Carrie. Welcome, Gary. Thanks for having me. Uh, Carrie... You're going to wear that mask for the whole interview. That's for... Oh, bloody hell. Okay, sorry, Gary, I forgot it's a two-person limit. It's exactly, exactly. <laughs> As we do, we're going to go through ten questions. So, what is your favourite book or author? To be fair, Gary, I don't read nearly as much as I should, as you rarely see me in the bookshop. I haven't for... seen you here in anything <laughs> other than a social basis, actually. <laughs> um, I, I like a few American uh, authors. Um, Jody Piccola is one. Alice Siebold. The reason I like them, basically, is they're easy reads, and it's uh, very woman-empowering. Um, sisters, mothers, daughters, some hardships. Um, 
reality stuff that uh, really hits home as a woman. You'll never catch me reading one of those books. <laughs> Favourite musical artist? I grew up uh, in, in dance clubs and roller rinks, and um, I liked a lot of pop music, but um, dear to my heart, I'd have to say, would be 90s hip-hop R&B. Nice, um, nice. PMD, Total, uh, Scape, B Smalls. Yeah. Um, list goes on. Like I said, I grew up with that in the 90s and the early 2000s. However, being from Canada... Uh, I do have a few favorite bands. One is very known. They're from Kingston, Ontario, and they're called The Tragically Hip. Grew up listening to them. I had siblings and older friends that, that were into them, so I like them. And then uh, one nice. of my faves is uh, from St. Catharines, Ontario, obviously, and he used to be uh, on in, in a group called Alexis on Fire, which was quite heavy, yeah. grungy, ah, screaming kind of thing that I don't like. So he's went on yeah. his own now. As Dallas Green is his name, and he's a major, major vocalist. He's got such good skills in the guitar and uh, he'd have to be one of my faves for okay. sure. Okay. Yeah. Preferred drink? Uh, iced tea. Right. Oh, you mean drink drink. I, I like wine. I'm a Sauvignon Blanc girl so I can yeah. drink Sauvignon from New Zealand all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll stick with the That's iced good. tea answer. Do you have a life motto? I don't really have a life motto. I think my motto changes daily. Uh, yeah. Depending on my mood and, and circumstances and what I'm faced with that day, however, I, I stuck with me since I was a child because I've I read it somewhere. Or I was having a hard time, so even if you're crawling, you're still moving forward. What's your favorite Hong Kong walk? Well, just like reading, Gary, I, I don't walk it <laughs> nearly as much as I should be. However, um, you know, favorite is the peak for everyone. I think for a lot of yes. people, we take our tourists there and our family and friends when they come to visit. You go up top and have a bite to eat, and, and the scenery is spectacular. However, my favorite walk would be the easy and simple Nam Shan. Yes. Because it's right yes. outside my back door. Yeah. And I've seen you and your yeah. wife and your dogs up there plenty of times. More more your yeah. wife than you. Hey. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. That's She's up there every other day Absolutely. pretty much. Absolutely, yeah. So you can either take yeah. it up you know, to Sunset Peak or yeah. take the easy route and go over up to Radio Hill across the yes. road. That's yes. my, my favorite. Sunset yeah. Peak only comes you know, here and yeah, there for special me. occasions, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know what you mean. But you're right. We see you there as much. Actually, nearly we see you nearly as much on that Nam Shan walk as we do in the China Bear. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've got that wrong. No, the China Bear wins, hands down. <laughs> Come on. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's the best walk for me. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's well known and yeah. pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, but I, I think not to be underestimated, I've seen Eslin struggle up there, you know, and she's, Well, that's you another know. story, Gary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favourite Hong Kong restaurant? So one of my faves back in the day when it was still around would be Bread Street Kitchen from Ramsey. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, nice. Um, but since since a few years ago, to be honest, I turned vegetarian, so it's hard for me to find a good restaurant um, that, you know, is hearty and uh, carb-free. So I eat a lot of side dishes, to be honest, when I go to restaurants and stuff. Yeah. Whatever is not the meat product, I will eat. Um, but I, I have a favorite only because it's close to my heart. Um, when I first moved to Hong Kong, we lived in Soho. And we had a roommate, and you know, when you first come to Hong Kong, you party a lot, and you you get yeah. around, and oh yeah. So we were we were frequent goers to Paisanos. Okay. And so yeah. we had this joke where me and my husband, boyfriend at the time, and roommate, we would grab a large pizza and shove it on the floor and sit yeah. around and and literally just yeah, that's nice. Eat it. So we would that's social call it floor pizza. Floor pizza. So I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> it's my favorite, but it's a uh, close to my heart. Yeah. You know. So vegetarian pizza off the floor <laughs> yeah. is your thing. Okay, Absolutely. I got you. Why did you become a vegetarian? But it's because I mm. like animals more than I like humans, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, especially moving to Hong Kong and seeing, you know, it's very different than Canada and animal welfare. And what really um, actually got me going and thinking about this is because I'd go out and, and water the cows. I'd bring yeah. big buckets of cows, uh, water yeah. up for the cows. And one day my husband turned around to me and said, oh, that's really nice of you because we're having burgers yeah. for dinner. Yeah. So, yeah, so I said, that's, that's, that's so wrong. Why am I caring if they're thirsty when I'm going to go inside and eat them for dinner? Faced with a python while walking up to the peak, <laughs> what would you do? Funny. Um, honestly, I would take a picture or a video and yeah. I'd send it to my, my good friend, Andrew McDonald, who is a, oh, yes. a snakey. I know there's a name for it. I remember there's a name for these kind of people that go out yeah. and actually look for snakes. But uh, him and his girlfriend, Catherine, are, are very into the snake yeah, they are, scene. They? Yeah. So that's what I would do is, is yeah. I would take photo or video, send it to him. He'd tell me what it was, where it was from, how populated the species is. And, <laughs> he would, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, and that's pretty much. And then I'd probably throw it on Hong Kong snakes. 
yeah. as well, if yeah. it was impressive enough. Yeah. <laughs> Try know? and make as many people as you can <laughs> jealous that you've yeah. seen the Python <laughs> right. and they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. What was the best advice you were ever given? Something that's really stuck with me growing up is um, I had a big family and um, respect was, was huge. And so yeah. my family had a motto uh, between themselves, respect your elders. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, you don't disrespect people older than you. You listen to what they say. You do as they say. You mentioned there you have a big family. Uh, how many siblings have you, have you got? Well, um, I have three brothers. Um, but what, yeah. I, what I mean by the big family is when I was quite young, um, my parents got divorced and my dad remarried a lady who had 10 siblings. Right. So all yep. those 10 siblings obviously had children my yeah. age. They had children. Wow. So it's a huge, huge family. Wow. And they became my family real young when I was probably five or six. Okay. So I grew up with them. And that's that's the big family I refer to. And I guess that's where your name, um, Shakeshaft Nicholson, does that reflect the two families? No. Um, so no? Shakeshaft is my, my father's um, last name and Nicholson is my married last name. Oh, okay. Brand yeah. That's Brandon's name. That's right. Gotcha. Finish this sentence, I live in Hong Kong because? Because at the time, um, nine years ago, when me and my husband moved to Hong Kong, well, boyfriend at the time, uh, it opted a better um, opportunity for us yeah. financially. Yeah. Um, what we would have been doing in Canada post to here um, is slightly different in terms of finances and... Um, and weather, to be honest. I yes. mean, I'm, I'm Canadian yeah. by heart. I, I love the great outdoors, but I will honestly be happy to never see snow again. I mean, a joke's a joke. It gets pretty cold in Canada, it's doesn't it? Ridiculous. I mean, seriously. Oh, yeah, like bitter. minus 30. And, and, you know, it's funny because people in Canada always say, oh, it, you know, it's it's six degrees. Suck it up. But we're living in, in a bloody, <laughs> yeah. in a concrete yes. cave. Yeah, you know, you've got are. heaters that are blowing hot air yeah. from the bottom of your, your walls here. Yeah. So they don't they don't understand. And because it's so it's so humid and damp here as well that it yeah. makes it that extra cold. But yeah. I've definitely climatized over the years because I'll be out there wearing a scarf and hat and people are laughing at me. Oh, you're not Canadian. Get out of yeah, here. You know? Exactly. What's your favorite area of Hong Kong? It's got to be Lantau. It's got to be Lantau, isn't um, it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, being, like I said, being in Hong Kong for nine years, I've not nearly explored Hong Kong as much as I should. There's still areas I go to for certain reasons, and I'll be like, oh, I've, I've never yeah. been here. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier that you have lived here for about nine years. Yep. Nine or ten years. What brought you here in the first place? Uh, my husband's job. He um, he got ca uh, offered a job through Cathay um, about 11 years ago. He was a pilot in um, Canada, and that's how we met. Yeah. I, I worked for UPS, so he had charters from UPS, uh, cargo charters, and uh, that's how we met. And we worked together, actually, for probably about seven years before we actually became a couple. Right, right. Uh, it took me that long to yeah. swingle him over, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, shortly after dating, he told me that he got a job in Hong Kong, and if I came with him, I could retire. Right. Really? He what? said that? He did, yeah. He's a great guy, actually. Really I've, al I've always liked him. So, like I said about oh, nice. the, the finances and stuff, he explained to me, you know, how much better it would be for him and me to, to yeah. explore this option. And uh, so we did it. So he moved, actually, a year before me uh, over to Hong Kong. I had to wrap up my life, you know. Yeah. I had a car and a house and a job and wow. uh, say goodbye to all my friends and family. Yeah, that and must so have been tough. Before I actually moved here, though, I came over for a month um, just to see, because I'd never been to Asia before. Yeah. Most Canadians, yeah. you know, they travel, they go to Mexico, yes. Florida. But yeah, so I came over for a month, and uh, day two, I was like, yeah. oh yeah, this is, this is gonna incredible. Work. It was so much fun. And like I said, in Soho for the first little while, it was just a big party all the time. Yeah. And then, like I said, that's when we came over to Muiwo came over for a day trip, like most people. And then, you know, mm -hmm. you see all the people on the Facebook, oh, looking to move to Mui Wo. No, we're full. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. We're getting that a lot, aren't yeah, we, at the moment? Thank God I got in here yeah. nine years ago, so it wasn't that bad. Yeah. But yes, yeah, you know, still everyone knows that thing. So yeah, we yeah. came over and, and we got a, a nice village house yep. and started accumulating more pets. And so you mentioned pets there. How many pets are you up to now? Because for me, in my head, it's always two more than you actually no, admit no. to. So. No, we have four of, of our own. And yes. then obviously we we foster yes. many, um, <laughs> which has led us to have four. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, Gary. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and isn't it the case that every time Brandon goes and flies somewhere, you get another dog? He always pretends that he doesn't want another one, and then he always falls in love with them. So after this fourth one, he's made it kind of clear that we're going to try and cut down on the fostering a little bit. 
but you know we know the importance of it and um yeah and it's it's much needed for charity so i volunteer for tales land tell as i mentioned andrew mcdonald earlier we're on the the field team yes. so we are the core members of the field team so we coordinate what has to be done the urgency of 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 matters yeah of course and that's what i spend most of my time on since i'm a, a stay-at-home dog mom yeah yeah you know um i take care of my household duties and that kind of stuff and then uh in my spare time i i i help out with tails yeah um eslin yeah. started this uh when jackie green left uh i think four years ago now so we we had a chat we actually met through jackie green uh me and eslin and um we went on a, a dog rescue mission yeah and we both showed up and at the time uh we knew each other but we didn't didn't yeah. talk. Yeah, yeah. And so we both showed up with Jackie Green and we both kind of said, oh, you, yeah. you know, it's you. Yes. So shortly thereafter, Aslan asked me if I could help out with her charity and uh, I'm rubbish at admin and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I said, well, listen, let me let me do some hands-on work and, and I'll yeah. do that kind of stuff. And so okay. it works It works out good. So yeah. we've, we've got about seven core um, members um, in our leadership team. And then we have a few volunteers on the outskirts that help when they can. Again, everyone yes. has full-time jobs and it's, yeah. It's hard for people to, to do these things. So yeah. when the community, you know, tags us on Facebook or gives us a call out, you know, some of them, it's it's frantic and urgent and they expect people to, to answer straight away, which is really impossible. To me, as an outsider, I see, you know, a lot happens on Facebook, more woe to tie families. Somebody will say, ah, I've seen a stray dog over there. I've seen a stray dog up in a, in a hillside somewhere. I've seen a stray dog in Poyo. Um, and then they just do a little hashtag tails or whatever, or at tails. I'm not very good at that just stuff. Just tails land tail. Just tails land tail, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And so they'll do one of those. And then f for you, suddenly, you're expected to drop what you're doing and, and well, go I and mean, investigate? Or how does that work? Yeah, really? again, it, it depends on the urgency of it. Um, a lot of people, um, whistleblow will say, for things that aren't really needed to be attended to, quickly yeah uh, you know you've lived here a long time there's yeah. many strays and there's many wandering dogs or free roaming dogs loosely owned dogs yeah and you know most of them are fine most of them take care of themselves yeah people feed them and watch out for them and uh, i know many people around around the neighborhood that go on their own volition and, and feed these dogs every day and take care of yes. them um so it depends on the urgency and, and you know if it's midnight and you've had a glass bottle of wine you know yeah 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 you, yeah. you, you, you kind of have to set your boundaries sometimes but we do try to attend to to what we what we can at the time but what people need to understand as well is we don't have a shelter right no so when so we take in do? animals yeah. we need fosters that's yes. the only way we can carry on yes with fosters and um it, it's hard when someone says i got you know this dog right now it needs to go somewhere especially if it's an adult dog and yeah. you don't know its temperament or where yeah. it came from from or its story you can't just give it to someone and say oh hey here's this dog i yes. know nothing about it good luck yeah so you kind of have to do a little bit of investigating and you need a, a period of time in the middle to kind of sort things out and that's yes. essence that, that's essence's job actually she she does the foster and adoptions yeah um but obviously we all pitch in whatever areas we can yeah if need be so it is a little frustrating sometimes and you know with the the animal welfare it seems like you know one step forward two steps back it's, yeah. it's never gonna end and that's why we work on dissexing yeah is a big thing uh in hong kong you need to get your dogs to sex they need to be to sex so they stop this problem stops. Yeah, and I think that's a legal uh, thing, isn't it? Really, that if you uh, take your dog to the vet SPCA and get it micro or whatever. Yeah. yeah, if you get it microchipped and rabies shot, which yes, you're supposed to do. Yes, um, they yeah. will push to sexing. That, yeah, but you know, some of these people, these like I said, these garden dogs or loosely owned dogs, yeah. they never see a vet in their life. Yeah. You know, and then, like, like I said, that's when we get the call, like, oh, I saw this dog in a garden and it's got, you know, half its legs ripped off or is bleeding from the neck. And we've helped many situations like this, um, which frankly pisses me off because they, they do have owners. And these yeah. owners don't really care for them as much as they should. So yeah. we're taking on the brunt of it yeah. um, with donations because yeah. we're non-charity -char profit. We, we don't make money. None of us, no. most times we're forking up money from Your our own, own pockets money, just yes. to help out, you yes. know. Yes. So we, we do um, tend to matters like that. And, and like I said, it's, it's quite heartbreaking. It's very rewarding, actually, in the sense of that you're helping a, a, a bad story. But it's heartbreaking yeah. to know that there's always going to be another one. Yeah, and there does seem to be, doesn't there? I mean, to me, um, I kind of like most people to try and kind of categorize where are these things coming from, where are the dogs and, uh, are coming from. And 
a lot of the locals their sort of farm and fisheries people it's quite natural for them to let their dogs live outside um and a more looser way of looking after their uh, their right. pets or, and or animals guard dogs or guard se. or guard dogs. that are always yeah. very lovely and friendly by the way it's, yeah. it's funny <laughs> yeah got a big bark yeah so there seems to be that sort of category and, and so sometimes people let's say westerners will stumble across those dogs up in the hillside and they'll just assume Ah, that dog doesn't belong to anybody, but actually it's probably a local dog that's just strayed strayed away. There's then a sort of category you kind of mentioned that people aren't desexing their dogs, so therefore pups, mothers are going up to the hills to to give birth to their dogs, and then the next thing you know there's seven dogs running around. Um, in fact, that's where we've got two of ours from, isn't it? Thanks mm-hmm. to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, Thank thanks you. to you loosely. <laughs> no, no, we love them. We love them. So there's there's that category then. At the moment, there's also this category where people cannot afford to repatriate their dogs or even worse still, they're just going and leaving them. Hmm. What what sort of percentage of of that is, does that make up of that? Uh, you know, it's it's hard to to put a a, a percentage on it, Gary, because a lot of cases um, people will give them to their friends or their friends' friends will yes. take them. So okay. I don't know the the percentage recorded. Um, I know through tales through the last year, I think we've taken in eight, right? Just with our charity. Yeah. Um, but other charities are much much larger than ours. Yes. We're, we're fairly new and we're fairly yeah. small, yeah. and we don't have a shelter, as I mentioned. So yeah. um, on the scales of shelters, we're we're pretty low um, yeah. in terms. So just alone in our shelters, it's happened, and it's it, it's heartbreaking, you know, because some people just honestly can't afford it. Yeah, you know, especially if you've got multiple animals, yeah. they can't afford it, and it's it's tough. And some people, I mean. I don't know if you've seen we got banana and mango hanging out here. Yes. You know, um yeah. there's rumors that, you know, people they were owned at one point and and this is just hearsay of course, but banana once had a home and they didn't have a home, so we took banana in and got him a, a foster, but yeah. because he's been on the streets and loosely owned for so long, he's just yeah. run away and yeah. back to his pack. So we again, yeah. because we don't have a shelter, we have to know things in advance to organize yes. properly and to to be able to home these these kids as as they can be but again like i said there are many people um around that are very very voluntarily feeding the dogs yes and you know i mean a dog needs shelter it needs a little yeah. bit of love it needs food yeah and it needs some freedom you know what i mean yes um so we'll get these calls all the time about oh i saw this dog running. well i've known mm. that dog for four years it gets fed every day yeah it has somewhere to go that's dry yes it knows its spots it's it's yeah. street smart so it's not going to get hit by a car or stuff yeah. like that yeah and i guess it's not the best situation everyone deserves a loving home but some of the dogs don't want it yeah you know that's just not they want to be free right they're the kind of hippie equivalents that would live out and amongst exactly. the elements if they were human so beings. the only thing that we yes. can we can say is well then you gotta you know contact a charity that has a shelter and is yeah. it better that the dog's sitting in a concrete yeah cage? not really is it they're right. getting stressed out and, right uh, and but whatever. of course what we what we have done and will continue to do is, is make sure these dogs are dissexed yeah so that you know they're not like we talked about but um, yeah try and stop the I think problem that's going the most forward. important there's a lady uh, Inca that lives here in Muiwo she's a long yeah. long time resident no Inca well yeah, yeah so she takes that upon herself and goes and feeds the dogs yeah and um when she's poorly or she's uh, has an appointment, which is not often because she's very dedicated, she'll reach out to us and ask us if we can yep. help her out and go feed the dogs. And of course we do. We you know yeah. we, we help her out when we can because she's basically a volunteer in her own little charity. Yeah. You know she yeah. pays for this dog food herself. And yes, so people like that really really help us out uh, in the community, and, and we're very grateful for that. Yes, I think we've got a good community for that. We've got a very caring community towards animals and the wider picture of water buffaloes and cows as well. Any injuries Absolutely. get notified, don't they? Yeah, uh, so many people, I mean, we uh, we have a, a Tales phone that people can call. They can also message us on Facebook Yeah. Um, and tag us on Facebook as they do. We're also on Instagram. Um, yeah. So there's many, many ways they can contact us. And again, like you said, it's kind of iffy in these situations because... More than not, these dogs are owned or at least being fed by somebody. Yeah. So you yeah. got to think again of of what's best for them. Yeah. You don't know? take them out of their environment. I mean, if they're, they're injured yeah. or 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 you know emancipated, starving. Yeah. Obviously, we we are going to to help that situation and, and and try to clarify it. We we have a chip scanner, so what we'll do is we'll try and get close enough to the animal to see uh, if it's got a. You've got a chip scanner. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's very handy, 
And um, if it does have a chip, we'll take that number to the SPCA and just yeah. let them know what's going on with the dog. A lot of the times they, they can't get a hold of the owner or the owner doesn't want to be get, got hold of. Yes. You know? yeah. And again, in that case, it's like, okay, where does this dog go now? Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. Is it is it friendly? Is yeah. it going to bite us? There's yeah. been some times that, you know, trying to catch dogs and dissect them, it's been... It's, few people have got bit along the ways you know yeah I but bet. that's that's yeah. that's just a risk you have to take for... yeah well it's the same yes you know, they are wild creatures to a certain extent they don't want to be um, right. they're scared aren't uh, they? i absolutely. suppose is the bottom yeah. line okay so that's how to get hold of you we'll put all that information on the podcast afterwards do you see like you know people like the spca uh you know at least in Hong Kong, in Moi Wo, we've got the SPCA, we've got the community vets, so we've got sort of two other ports of call. So we got the community vet, like you know, you said, and uh, SPCA. We also use uh, the vet in Tung Chung, the animal clinic in Tung Chung. Right. And these vets give tails um, a small discount. Yes. Um, for helping out and doing what we're doing, which yeah. helps us out, of course. Yeah. However, just recently, um, because lack of employees apparently at SBC. I don't know if you notice when you go to the SBC yeah. there's always a new vet. Yeah, like, I do. they kind of rotate. Yes. And it's kind of irritating because you build a relationship with your vet yeah. for your animals and it's comforting. Yeah. So just of, as of late that has kind of stopped and it's a little bit of a wind roll now if you'd say and and I know they're having a hard time as well keeping vets cuz as you said everyone's everyone's leaving. Um but just recently SBC is actually due to this apparently they've cut off um the free dissecting program for charities oh okay so actual there's a, a mongrel the sexing program uh, through spca which is if you bring a mongrel in you can yeah. get the animal to sex for free okay However, you can't get it the anesthesia free you can't get the meds for free you yeah. can't get the aftercare for free yeah so all of that obviously comes from our our donations um as tails but you know that was a real kind of kick in the ass let's say when, when they told us about that because yes. we, we rely on them to, to help us out that just stopped. recently a few months ago we were um, donated a, a tails vehicle from one of our our volunteers and a great supporter Marcus Turner him and his his yeah. colleague donated money to, to get tails a, a decent van yeah so we can take yeah. the dogs to the vets and transport them to fosters and adopters and Perfect. that really helped out a lot yeah um, so now yeah. we can drive to Tung Chung if because you know you go to SBCA and you're not getting an appointment for two months yeah. They're so backed up. Bless yeah. them. It's not their fault, but it is what it is. So we have to travel sometimes, even Wan Chai, SPCA. Yeah, um, it's a bit of a trek, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it, it's good that we have a reliable vehicle now to... to yeah, help us very get definitely. That. Taos is a charity. Taos is doing a lot of good now in the community for four years. But you can't run on thin air. You do need donations. People can donate on a monthly basis, can't yep. they? A set amount. And yep. then that helps you guys to budget going forward yep. um, knowing what monies are coming in so if you want to donate to tails connect onto the website and yep. they can do it via the website Absolutely. can't they yep. even a one off donation let's say you've lived in Lantau for a, a period of time and you're now repatriating back home why not drop a bit of money in tails pocket just to say thanks for the Four years and of people help do. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. People do, and it, like again, it's it's tough times right now for a lot of people. You know, yeah. people's jobs are at stake, and yeah. and um, wages are diminishing, and and we get that. And but we we do we do have some supporters. We've had a few um, largest large ish <laughs> donations yeah. from some very very you know nice people around the community that's that's helped us out a lot. Um, and, and anything, you know, $50 helps. You yeah. Know? I've actually yeah. had people come up to me on the streets and actually give me cash. Yeah. And just say, hey, this is for Really? Tales. That's it's, nice. It's really nice. Yeah. It's really lovely. Yeah. You know? um, well, I'll do that today then. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's donated enough. He's got four animals of his own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we do have a collection box in, in the shop. Yes. We do sell some Tales merchandise. I feel that we're twinned with you guys, that we're here to help and support you as much as we can. Absolutely. And you we guys, know you've you let us host uh, adoption days here before. Yeah, we've hosted adoption days. Little, we had yeah. the little, remember the game day where the kids yeah. would come by and play the yeah. games and stuff? Brilliant. So, yeah, brilliant. Where the really... cats came and peed in at the <laughs> shelves near the back. I remember that. Yeah, it was really uh, good. <laughs> we appreciate it, Gary. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, you know, when things get back on their feet a bit more with COVID, we can do a few more of those with you. Yeah, and, excellent. Um, you know, so... You know, as a charity and as a volunteer system, we take whatever we can get. You know yes. what I mean? I mean, yeah. we, we appreciate everything. We, our fosters, our donators, our volunteers, um, 
our core staff that is working you know with with full-time jobs yeah. you know yeah we just appreciate anything and everything we we can get and 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 you know get the word out there and have people yeah. help out and I, like i said people do people do there's people that will you know text me directly instead of yeah. going through and just say hey carrie just so you know there's this this yeah. cat we saw and it's got and that's yeah. fine that's great yes. i'll go take a peek we'll take a look and we got a vet on our our volunteer uh catherine catherine Cl- yes. yeah yeah and she's great too she donates her time and we'll you know come out and take a look at a cat and try and see what's yeah. wrong with it we are tails lanto but we have um we have done calls and helped animals on hong kong island as well yes. in emergency situations yeah um, you have and so i haven't really mastered driving on hong kong island yet um, yeah. i only got my license about three years ago right and of course in canada you drive on the other side of the road yes steering wheel is on the other side so it was very very yeah. weird for me yeah. uh, to pick this up the facebook site is tails it's just tails lantau is it tails dot lantau tails dot lantau yeah. on uh facebook for the website it's Tails Same. Tails Lantau. Yeah. But all one word or Tails nope. dot Lantau? Two words, Tails Lantau. Tails Lantau. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and like I said, we have a, a mobile phone that's um on the website as well. They can call, Facebook yeah. message, Instagram message, whatever is easiest for yeah. uh, but I just want to put out there as well, we do have a quarantine uh, f- uh WhatsApp group uh through Tails um for the residents yes. of Lantau. So um we've posted it on Facebook. Um and how to how to join. You just go on and click it and then we can add you to the to the WhatsApp group. Yes. I think we have about 50 people, 60 people on the group already. Really? And it's a great way for people to discuss who can yeah. help who if yeah. certain things happen. You know, yeah. it's good to have a, 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 a plan in mind. Yeah. Someone that can take your pets and come and pick up your pets and have dog food, medication, whatever special needs yeah. your dog or cat will need at the time. Yes. Just to be organized and prepared, right? That's going to be the next nightmare, isn't it, oh, really? Geez. I think if people... I mean, we've been very lucky on Lantau, you know, touch wood, but I think it's a matter of time before you know covid goes gets rife around here and people are going to start getting put away and then their animals are left absolutely and you know i've heard these rumors too that uh, again who knows what's really happening in the real world here but uh they won't be allowing you to go out and walk your your pets if you're quarantined you have to yeah. stay home I, well how, how are you, how are you gonna, gonna do that i don't know that yeah i mean thankfully Just i have a garden as as, as few do people do around yeah. you know yeah and i'm very blessed for that because my dogs would be holding it for for oh, weeks. Yeah, there's no bloody way that they're, they're yeah. going to go in the house. No. So no. I, I really feel for those people that don't have outdoor space and, and are facing this because I've seen a few posts and a few comments about people really concerned about. Surely you can yeah. walk your damn dogs. It would be crazy not to let people do that. And generally, when you're walking your dog, you're moving reasonably quickly. You're out in the fresh air. You know, c- come on. You I know. know. We've, we've got to look after these these animals absolutely what about if people want to volunteer to be with you guys to help go out and capture animals you know as we said we joked about earlier you know andrew and catherine are away and that has a big impact on your tales charity i think Uh, are there you know if there are drivers out there people that are around at the moment yeah we actually spare time we've got a few uh, quite a few inquiries about about volunteering um yeah it's very appreciative um, however, the thing with us is, again, um, it's very last minute. Yeah. We rarely have things that are yeah. planned. So yeah. uh, we, we've, we've reached out to, to some of our, our people that are wanting to be volunteers and basically said, listen, nothing's really happening right now. We're not doing adoption days. Things like you get a call and you got to go in an hour for yeah. a stray dog that's... I don't really feel comfortable just bringing um, someone I've not met before yes. to say, hey, do you want to come on your own risk yeah. Kind of thing. So yeah. it's about routine, and and there's no real routine um, to do anything. We have we have yeah, um, brought up on true. board a few um, yeah. volunteers from around the community to come and help. Yeah. And there's there's you know a lot of them know their their shit about animals, and so you don't really have to stress in that way. But yeah, the the situation can be dangerous. You don't know what what you're facing. Um, yeah. But we're all we're always welcome volunteers. But I feel like in the past little while. Um, cause thank goodness, not much has been going on. Uh, we've kind of told people just to stand by Yeah, okay. and if we need you again, yeah. um, Mui Wo is, is the best because yeah. we have, we have some, uh, DB volunteers. Yeah. We have someone on Hong Kong Island, yeah. which to say, can you come over on a ferry yeah. and help catch this cat? That's not going to appear today yes. and then take the ferry back home. It's, it's kind of a ball ache, you that's, know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. Well, with that, I just want to say. Carrie, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. 
You can listen to all our Vibrations podcasts published on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Amazon Music, TuneIn and Alexa, Stitcher, Listen Notes, Player FM, SoundCloud and a few others. Or you can watch on our YouTube channel under Live at Vibe HK or follow the links from my website at vibehk.com. The opening and closing music comes from Celestial and is called Green Island Dub and is on the Retrospect final album, On Sale at Vibe. Finally, a reminder that Vibe is open seven days a week, every day of the year, from 12 noon until approximately 6.30pm. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for listening to the 39th Vibe Book and Music Shop podcast called Vibrations. I'm Gary Brightman. You get my vibe? Can you imagine what this old island must have looked like to those Dutch sailors when they first saw it? Fresh green. Like a dream of a new world. They must have held their breath. Afraid it would disappear before they could touch it.